Hey everybody, Brant Frost. Hope y'all are doing well and having a wonderful holiday season and Merry Christmas. You know, the end of a year is a time not just for celebration, but it's a time for reflection and New Year's resolutions. And as I've looked back over the last 12 months, it's been a very interesting year to say the least and a mixed bag to be sure. We had many successes, but also some sobering failures as well. If you look back over the last four years, now almost four years that I've been your first vice chair here in Georgia, I think back to when we first started and we had a lot of great ideas. We were able to implement many of them. And I also look at some of the ideas we weren't able to implement and we see the consequences of that. We've seen the consequences of having a Secretary of State who has not been as helpful as he might have been in ensuring election integrity. And that goes back to the consequences of the elections in 2018. Elections have consequences, as many a politician has said, including the former president of the United States, not the President Trump, uh, the previous president before him. We all remember him. And another thing that we've learned is that we have to be better engaged in ways that the Democrats are engaging. Now, obviously, we're under a handicap. The Biden regime Justice Department will give us a colonoscopy at the slightest uh, provocation, or even just, they don't need an excuse anymore, frankly, whereas they will let people get away with murder, unless I'm talking about Hillary Clinton, on their side. Now, I'm not the one with all the answers, far from it. In fact, one of the things I've enjoyed most about being your vice chairman for these last four years is that I've been able to glean so many good ideas from you all across the state. One thing that I think we definitely need to talk more about is partnering and many of you have suggested this as well, partnering with nonprofit organizations that are doing good work and that we can use as a conduit to so many disengaged voters. One of the amazing things about this election, folks, is how no one would have expected such strong Republican turnout relative to the amount of people who thought that the election was rigged even going into this process, even after the reforms we were able to make here in Georgia and other states, there were still a lot of people who just didn't trust the electoral process, but almost all of them came out and voted anyway. And that's a tribute to the American spirit and the spirit of defiance, if nothing else, that they may cheat, but we're not gonna just stay home and let them get away with it. We're not gonna make it easy for the rascals. And that's a very good attitude to take. But more than that, we have got to be more active and be seen to be more active. Uh, one of my very dear friends recently pointed out to me that it's not enough if the Republican Party is working behind the scenes to make a difference. Now, behind the scenes is a very important element, but in order for our base to be inspired, to be encouraged, to give their time, their talent, their treasure, to get out there and help us win these vital elections and start winning every election again and not just some, we have got to be seen clearly taking a stand in the public arena for these issues that are so important, like election integrity, like making our electoral get out the vote system a 21st century model. You know, we're still using methods. You know, the consultancy class is getting rich off 1990s and early 2000s methods, while the Democrats are forcing their consultants to earn their pay by actually delivering real victories, not just getting ad shares from TV ads and direct mail. We've got to be more effective at turning out the vote and getting people to absentee vote, to early vote. We have so many examples around the country where Republicans have had success, some in smaller ways, some in bigger ways. Often we hear about the results in New York State, and that's a great example. To take New York, a state that has been Democrat run for so many years, Republicans have not controlled the state's House, Senate, and governorship in decades, yet this year, Republicans all across New York, led by the our top of our ticket, Lee Zeldin, performed incredibly well. In fact, if you look at the New York Young Republicans Club, a group of dynamic young Republicans, many of their members were actually statewide elected candidates. And if you heard about their recent uh, Christmas party, they were not depressed. They weren't saying, well, what was us? We can't win again. They had a victory mindset and they came close to flipping New York State. That shows you what a group of determined patriots fighting hard and fighting smart can do. One of the ideas that's been suggested to us as well is using some of the methods that we've seen in other states to boost engagement and volunteerism. I asked someone recently, what do you think would get more people active in the Republican Party as volunteers, precinct captains, etc.?" And they said, well, 
make it more meaningful. And I asked them to flesh that out, and they basically said, well, you're going to spend many hours over several weekends being active in the convention process and then being a precinct chair and being expected to give much of your time, several hours a month, five, 10 hours a month, and during election season, maybe 20, 30 hours a month to this cause. But we need to have more meaning to it. It needs to have more influence in the course of the election, helping to determine events and not just be in a support role to candidates. And that inspired us to look at other states, states like Virginia, states like Utah, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, where Republicans are much more active in the selection process because we've come to a point in our nation's politics where on the one extreme, you have candidates who are clearly just in it for the money and for themselves. They don't care about anything. They're career Congress critters. They're political lifers. They don't care. They're just in there to have a title. We all know them, Mitt Romney, and we don't need those people, and they can't win. They do not inspire voters. They cannot win in these key swing states as we've seen. On the other hand, you have people who mean well, but who do not have the political experience or acumen to navigate either a campaign or even if they got elected to navigate the halls of Congress or of government. One of the saddest things I've ever seen is several well-meaning candidates who've been elected in recent years, but when they got elected, you know what they did, folks? They hired the same staffers and advisors who had advised previous establishment Republicans. And the sad part is they didn't even know. They meant well. They wanted to hire America First and MAGA patriots to work for them, but they didn't know the difference. They weren't able to discern because they were so new to politics. We have found ourselves in a position of having on the one hand, the people at the one end of the party who don't care about the issues, who are just in it for themselves. And on the other end, people who lack the experience and the knowledge of the process to be able to choose wisely in campaign management, in staffers, in people to help them craft a message that can appeal to voters. In North Carolina, for example, you saw a great a classic case of where you can marry principles and electability in the candidacy of Congressman Ted Budd, a solid Mark Meadows Republican, member of the House Freedom Caucus. Ted won a very competitive primary and then turned around and defeated a very electable Democrat op opponent, the former Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court, the first African-American woman to hold that post. Yet Ted Budd was able to win that race in a state which is very competitive. If we can copy that in other states, we can be more effective. And to my friend's point about having more influence in the process, I think it's time we start a serious conversation in our party, not just in Georgia, but around the nation, in giving more say to those thousands of activists who do the hard work in helping and giving them more of a say in picking our nominee. Because I think history has shown that our current model, which was originally designed to give the people more of a voice, has become corrupted over time to where now a handful of power brokers, super PACs, mega donors, and political influencers give the endorsement or the money to a certain candidate. And at that point, the race is all but over. One or two candidates at most are viable, and the rest of it is frankly just a waste of time. In conservative politics today, folks, I'm gonna tell you something. Anyone who's ever run for Congress will tell you that if you do not have a great deal of personal wealth or a very rich person to back you, if you're not an establishment candidate, there's only one source of revenue for you, or, or donations rather, if you're not an establishment shill, and that is the Club for Growth. They've done great work in the past, and thank God for the club. But the fact of the matter is, if they aren't behind you, and you can't self-fund or have a big benefactor, the odds that you'll be able to beat the McCarthy-McConnell cabal drop to about 5%. One organization is all that stands between us and oblivion, and it shouldn't be that way. We need to make it so that more than just a handful of power brokers can decide who our nominee is at either wing of the party. And that's something that we need to talk a lot more about in the future. Not excluding people from the process, as some would say, but actually broadening the tent to where actual choices can be offered and more informed people can help to make a decision rather than just a few hundred power brokers in Washington or Atlanta. Another thing that, and we, I'm going a little long, so I'll wrap up here. Another thing I'd like us to consider is we need to engage in the legislative process more and help to build momentum. We have courageous legislators in both the State House and State Senate working very hard to advance legislation that their grassroots constituents have asked for. And what's sad about it 
is that we have not done as well as we might at supporting that effort. We did do a great job with the Senate legislation that passed in 2021 to help reform our elections. We came up with an excellent report the state party put together. We pushed for it, we lobbied hard for it, and we got about half of it passed, the easier half, frankly, but there are still parts that need to be done. We need to continue to push for that in this new legislative session. The party worked very well with our county parties and our volunteers to lobby legislators, to call them, to urge them to do the right thing. We need to follow the model of the Texas Republican Party, and every year we need to have legislative priorities that have been voted on by our delegates, by our committee members, and have that mandate, and then we need to aggressively lobby for those issues. We need to remember that we play a very important part as Republican activists and volunteers in getting these guys elected, and we should expect them to pass the platform that they campaigned on. We're not asking them to do things that they didn't campaign on. We're simply asking them to keep their word. Yes, a novel concept in politics, I'll admit, but just because politicians usually trim their sales to what the lobbyists and donors and special interests want once they get elected is no excuse for us to lay back and say, well, that's the way of the world. It doesn't have to be that way. It can't be that way. If we're gonna be true to those who came before us, to the sacrifice of everyone who have died, bled and died for our freedom, for our country, for this land we call America, all the way from Valley Forge to Quezon to Kuwait City, we have got to be true to that vision. We've got to stand up and demand that they keep their word with us. So that's just a few thoughts, folks, and I'd like to hear yours as well. Please send me a text message at 678-326-9705 or shoot me an email at bfrostv at gmail.com with your ideas and feedback. I'd very much appreciate any suggestions you have. We need to do this together, folks, and I'm committed over the next two years to work with you to make our party more agile, more active, and to learn from the successes of anyone, even if it's a Democrat, because a win is a win is a win. And this country is in too much peril for us to be too proud to take good advice no matter where it comes from. I hope to talk to you again soon, folks. I look forward to the new year with all the tough times we've had this year, the trials and tribulations and successes as well. There's still hope. And as long as there's life, there's hope. Let us always remember that in the words of that great old hymn, we can face uncertain days because he lives. And I, we know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives and was born in a manger over 2000 years ago. Merry Christmas, everyone, and God bless.